Hi everyone, thanks for joining. Um, you know, it's my first webinar, so uh, sorry if uh, things go a little bit awry at times. I've just been um, at a conference and come back, so I literally just got home. So uh, kind of switching headspaces here. But um, we had uh, Karen Allen from San Francisco uh, teaching us um, and she does a lot of work with infertility, so um, I don't know if you know about her, but yeah, very interesting teacher, and yeah, yeah, she was representing the United States very well. So, here we go then, uh, um, let's start this presentation. So, using the VES, the Talkers Expert System, so, why use the VES? That's the first question we want to address. And, you know, I'm just going to go straight into the Organon, um, aphorism 153. So what I've highlighted there is that the more striking, exceptional and unusual signs and symptoms are to be especially and almost solely kept in view. Now, as far as I understand the, the VES, um, this is, you know, it will really focus on this uh, side of your case taking and analysis. Okay. And... And also the more common and indeterminate symptoms are to be seen with almost every disease in medicine and thus deserve little attention. So essentially, we can translate that to mean, you know, your small rubrics are the characteristic symptoms. And those are the ones that are given more emphasis when you use the VES. The larger symptoms are more generic and they're given less importance. So the way it sorts your symptoms is more intelligent than just uh, your standard flat repertorization. Okay, and if there are any questions about the terminology, do please ask, and we'll and we'll we'll cover that. Okay. Next slide. So when I was coming up with the idea for this webinar, uh, I made myself a little mind map uh, to kind of gather my thoughts on it. So you know, I've mentioned it here. So when do I use the vest? So when the case that I've got has strong and striking symptoms, uh, that's a phrase that I've sort of borrowed from F Fred, Fred Troyans. And, you know, that's just another way of saying those SRP, strange, rare and peculiar, the, the characteristic symptoms. Okay, so for me, it's in acutes in cases of children um, or cases where there's a relatively unsuppressed vital force where I can use this system because it relies so heavily on um, getting good, well-described symptoms. So up here, um, so I forgot to, I will be back one moment, I'm just going to launch this little program. Okay, there we go. Cool, so it should be easier to see what I'm doing now. Yeah, so over here, if you get the strongly marked and reliable modalities, concomitants, etiology, etc. So, you know, in the UK, we call it CLAMS. So that's our little mnemonic for concomitants, location, etiology, modality and sensations. So, you know, some people are really adept at describing their symptoms. And those would be those will be the cases where you can really get stuck in to using the best. Um, so the way you take the case needs to encourage the patient to be as descriptive and specific as possible. I use a questionnaire, which helps set the tone so that people are thinking in that way and you know, going into enough detail. So if the symptoms are expressed with intensity, um, that is, you know, it can be a hard thing to gauge. Um, grading is very important in bringing out the best of vests. So grading is like the, the number you give um, to the rubric. You can go like from one to 10 in Radar Opus. Uh, in reality, you want to go to between one and four, and that's like plain type, italic, bold, and underlined. And the way you mark the symptoms will um, influence your repertorization a lot more in VES than when you're doing a normal repertorization. So how do you how do you um, know when to mark them? I mean, obviously, if it's a you know symptom that's been there a long time, you can mark it up to a bold, um, or if it's something that is repeated or you know, real impediment to the patient, then it's those kind of things you want to be thinking about when you grade your symptoms. 
So Luke, um, mm. what does the, the acronym CLAMS stand, stand for? Can you go over that again? Of course, yeah. So um, it sort of goes back to um, the Boninghausen approach. So every symptom should be um, fully explored in terms of, um, you know, it's like you take a symptom and someone says, my head hurts, you know, and it's like by itself doesn't give us any useful information. So you need to explore it and find out, you know, the modalities are the easiest to what makes it better or worse. So essentially CLAM stands for concomitants. So the headache always comes when I've got um, indigestion. Um, location, is it in the temple or the occiput or, you know, where is it? Um, then the etiology, you know, what happens to bring it on? What was the onset? The sensation, is it cutting, stabbing, stitching, um, throbbing, pulsating? And the extension, does it go down the neck? Does it go into the eye? So it's like, like a fully explored symptom. And patients these days, uh, I don't know how, what you find in your practice, but they're not used to going into that level of detail. Um, people are probably more used to talking about, you know, their emotional state. Um, so it's something that needs to be encouraged um, and you have to work to bring it out, I would say. But you might have a different experience over there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So any other questions? Nope, I think we're no. good. Cool. So um, using the vest, if you want to see polycrests and small remedies, that cover the affinities and keynotes of the case. So the other nice thing about it is that it's not just, um, <clears throat> you know, if you do a standard repertorization, you, you're likely to get, you know, your nat natrium, your, your sulfur, your lycopodium, ignatia, etc. You have to go hunting if you if those remedies aren't fitting with your understanding of the case. Um, the vest has three columns: one for the sort of polycrests and then one for medium and one for small remedies and so you get a you get an insight uh, far more quickly and easily into those as possible candidates and um yeah i mean that's the other side to it it allows you to work quickly essentially so um for a busy practice it's very helpful i'm just gonna move this okie dokie yeah, and so best works with characteristic symptoms, giving these more prominence. Even if the remedy doesn't cover the to totality as well as a polycrest, it will still come through. You'll still see it. So we'll, we'll come to that when we look at some examples. And then just a little warning, you need to be careful with mind symptoms because, <clears throat> I mean, you do anyway. Um, Jeremy Sher talks about the, the minefield of the mind uh, section and because it's all op open to interpretation, unlike physical symptoms so basically because um, the VAS works with a Kentian hierarchy um, mind symptoms are given more more prominence more weight in the repertorization so if you put in a bold type small mind rubric the VAS is going to really jump on that and bring forward that remedy or those remedies so you have to be damn sure that it's the correct symptom <laughs> Okay, let's go on. So when does it not work quite as well? So, you know, in cases where there's a lot of medication maybe or the vital force is quite suppressed and the case taking doesn't bring out the sort of symptoms that you need for the vest, you know, it needs that stuff to chew on to do its, you know, to do its work. Um, if the symptoms are vague or, you know, um, you don't get very much, you don't get very far when you go hunting for the sensation and modalities and all those clams that, that I call them. Or if the, you know, if it's a, if it's a case where you're doing a kingdom sensation kind of analysis, it's not going to help that much. Um, if the case is revolves around sort of themes and the way they use language, and, you know, then it's more a appropriate to use something like Jeremy Sher's Q repertory where it's like large rubrics and um, you know, it's like just broad kind of themes and you take a broad brush strokes approach. Right then. Okay, so <clears throat> this is sort of taken from the manual of the vest, which even if you use it, you, you might not have seen. 
we covered it a bit already. So it's vital to indicate the intensity of rubrics. You have to start with a minimum of four, otherwise the vest won't open. Um, don't use too many large rubrics because it will kind of, it doesn't work as well with large rubrics. The caveat to that is if you use a large rubric, um, you want to kind of grade it higher, like, a, you know, put in bold. You can be more uh, bold with your grading in a large rubric because there are more remedies in it. There are more italic and bold remedies in there. So you won't skew your results as much. And I'll, I'll give an example of, oh, of that later. Okay, you can use the vest with the patient in front of you. Um, so it assists you by highlighting probable remedies and then it asks you to ask questions about the possible remedies that it thinks are most indicated by the symptoms. And then you can combine that with the keynotes in Radoripus to help you formulate some questions to rule out or to confirm a particular choice. Okay, okay. Yeah, and I think for me it's important not to ask direct questions until you've heard, you know, the spontaneously, what comes spontaneously from the patient. So it's, you know, that the closed kind of questions come later once you've you know, put some symptoms into the vest and see what comes through. So, yeah, and it says here, never omit rubrics that might not seem to fit the picture because when you're using it, you can get away with putting more rubrics in than um, your standard repertorization. Um, yeah, what was I going to say? Yeah, basically, if, you know, if it's a symptom, then, you know, you can put it in. That's, that's the message here. Okay. Yeah. Basically, if you're pushed for time, you know, you can, you can bung quite a lot in there and it won't ruin your repertorization. So that's a nice feature. So just a few more tips include mental, oh, go back, include mental, general, and local symptoms. As I said, the mind symptoms will be given the most value um, in, the, in the hierarchy and then the generals and then the locals. And I've got a few examples to show how that, how that works in effect. Um, yeah, yeah, there we go, we're getting there. You can add um, causative symptoms as well. Um, so that's like, you know, sort of like the etiology that we talked about. And that has to be done when you're adding a rubric, you can't do it later, which is a bit weird, but that's the way it is. Okay, and then just a little explanation of, um, you know, your intensities or your gradings. And this is based on um, what Kent did in his, for his repertory. So number one, symptoms there. Number two, frequent and intense. Three, very frequent, very intense, and so on. It gives some guidelines here because, and if you, if you put too many grade four symptoms in, that will sort of remind you, oh, you've, you've put too many in, it's unbalanced, change it. Um, so yeah, you kind of, it kind of teaches you how to get the best out of it essentially as you go. Right. What's next? So what does it actually do? It, um, combines the different analysis strategies that we have in Radar Opus. So your standard one here is adds up all the symptoms and adds up all the degrees and sorts the remedies by that. Then you know, you've got these ones, which are just simpler versions. Then you've got prominence, which is the grading or intensity. You've got small remedies, small rubrics. So it kind of combines all of those strategies in, into one and sort of makes a blend that hopefully gives you more intelligent results. Okay. So here's a little example <coughs> that I made earlier. So, you know, up the top, you can see that, um, you know, you would definitely, if you were looking at symptoms like this, ailments from embarrassment, want of self-confidence, conscience about trifles, etc. cetera, you, you'd be looking at Barita card probably. So um, when you load the, the, the expert system, uh, because there's no intensity marked, there's no standout remedy brought through. 
as soon as you add some uh, intensity to the rubrics, and the first two were marked as causative as well, then the vest kind of springs into action and says, hey, look at, look at Burrito Club. So it can be a nice way to, to confirm a choice when you're looking at, you know, a group of nine remedies that all cover, the, you know, the four symptoms that you've put in. So I'll show you that process of um, putting those rubrics in. Okay, I'll go over to Raynor. So it was um, <clears throat> ailments from embarrassment. So I'm in the mind chapter and you can set up your radar in different ways. Uh, by default, you'd have to type mind to go back into the mind chapter. But um, I've got mine set up differently. Hang on, let me just so you can see my keyboard strokes. Let's just do this, reorganize. Yeah, so if I just type ailments, it will go straight in, staying in the mind chapter. So the way that you do that is you come up to your little preferences cog and you select this option here, stay in the same chapter when typing in the document. And then you can use the keyboard or mouse to navigate ailments from embarrassment. Okay, and you can see this is the rubric where I am and you can take the symptom directly from the navigation window. If you want to mark it as causative, you take and specify the options. Opens a new window and then you, you tick that option and you can change the intensity there. Okay, and then take the rubric. Let's just go back. So I think we also took <coughs> confidence onto the self and then the shortcut to do the same thing almost the same thing is shift equals and then you can just press the number that you want for the intensity and then press enter and that goes into your clipboard <clears throat> okay and then we'll just put those other two rubrics in so if you want to learn shortcuts, I, I'm personally a fan of shortcuts. Alt-1 will take you back to your repertory, although it didn't take me back to synthesis. I'll just delete the other ones. So Alt-1 is your repertory, Alt-2 is your Materia Medica, and Alt-3 goes to your patient file. Okay, so it's the same as pressing these, well, almost the same, as uh, follows the same order. Um, so what were we at, conscientious? about trifles and then uh, you can drag and drop if you're just you know using uh, if you're not adding an intensity to it and then we had vertigo motion tag so you open the binoculars vertigo motion. and then you can either you can even drag it straight from the navigation window so there's loads of different ways that you can work and if you forget or want to change the intensity later, you just click on the rubric and type the number and it changes the intensity. So that's now should be the same. And if I open the vest, hopefully we should see the same result. Yeah, it's going to close that bit there. So here is where you can, um, <clears throat> you can adjust a few settings um, for instance you can have the keynotes <coughs> page come up straight away uh, and then when you're saying you know differentiating oh does this fit my patient or is it more <coughs> more nature muir or is it more china and it's useful then to have the keynotes right there and especially if you scroll to the generalities you're going to find um, questions that you might ask for confirmatory like what foods do you like or you know what drinks what weather is best for you so it'll give you good prompts when it comes to confirming a remedy choice <coughs> excuse me and you'll see already in the medium column <coughs> those won't have keynotes so i'll just go back to the symptoms <coughs> you can also have it display the rubrics that it doesn't have so these are the ones it does have doesn't have so, you know, you see already some 
you know, a snake, um, <clears throat> a spider, uh, a, a <clears throat> bowel nose aid, a coquina. So, and you know, even down here, some some probably very obscure plant remedies, scleranthus. It's used. Um, it's a bark flower remedy, actually. But you know, so it already shows you stuff that you wouldn't see um, in a normal repertorization. And uh, you know, if your kind of go-to prescription doesn't work, then you've you know you've got these other options to explore. Um, the other thing you can do, of course, is to change the view. By default, it's set to the Vitolkus view. Now, what that means is that um, the repertory is limited to certain authors um, to guarantee, you know, better um, reliability, essentially. So the repertory is built up from provings, cured cases, um, editions by different um, homeopaths. So, you know, editions by people like Roger Morrison and Fruk Master and Others will be included in the Vitolkus view, but modern provings won't be included because you know they haven't been verified, and um, it's a way of um, looking at it in a more cautious way. You could say, you know, stick with what works and build on that. It's kind of his message, I'd say. But of course, you can change the view. Um, you can change to Pierre Schmidt view, and that brings out the uh, bowel nose aid, so it just changes the results slightly, or my datum comes through a bit more. Or you can change to the full repertory, and that will give you <clears throat> all the, you know, modern, so Latrodectus, Carbofullerenum, a proving done at the School of Homeopathy in England, Lacumanum. So different remedies come through depending on the view that you use. You can even go back to, well, you could... If you use kingdoms, you could say, well, I'm sure this is an animal case. And um, Ambergrisia, Latrodectus. So different remedies will come through depending on the view. Anyone got any questions? Yeah, yeah, a couple questions. Um, so um, first off, can you pull in any rubric from any repertory or does it have to be Shorian's? No, you, you can pull in any rubric from any repertory. So it's it's based on authors. So if they're like, you know, if it's Fatak, Borake, Boja, etc., uh, it will work fine. Yeah. Um, and then somebody is asking, um, is this VES program an add-on? Um, I believe it is an add-on program. Yeah. 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 And yeah. It it does depend on your um on your country different people have it set yeah. up differently but yeah Definitely. it's an add-on i think there's a deal on um that'll be running after this presentation so. yeah there is yeah so look out for your email tamara because there's going to be a sale for this program um and then um alan is asking is there a document that lists all of the shortcuts for radar open uh, yeah things that you were doing yeah 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 help useful shortcuts so yeah, it's right there. Just just download that while well, it just opens. It's already on your computer, and um, I think I just took sh uh, took um, screenshots of them and uh, just said about learning. I should say that I'm using a Mac, so you know where it says obviously Control is for Windows and Command is for Mac. Yeah. So if I say Command and use a PC, just it's Control. Okay, great. And then in your because you're a busy homeopath, do you use this more than the clipboard function? Like, how much of the time do you do you rely on Vithulcus expert system? Um, yeah, I use it in cases where um, the symptoms are, are good and strong and unique. So for me, it's more useful um, with children because they express their symptoms um, in a uncompensated way whereas adults usually compensate and they um you know it can take a while for them to open up or or their symptoms are suppressed by medication physical symptoms and it's more mind symptoms and then i don't find it as you know for me i i you know i have different tools and you know if it's a more of a mind kind of case i 
like to use the Q repertory um, of mental qualities, and you can combine it with the with the VES. Um, if you had a case which, you know, we'll come to this in a sec, but, you know, if there's a particular organ affinity, then it's very useful. Um, yeah, I'd probably use it in about um, 60 to 70% of my cases. Okay. I know that um, doctors in India who are you know, incredibly busy rely on it a lot. And that's when, you know, essentially it's like a keynotes approach. So it's, it is trying to match the keynotes of your patient with the keynotes of the remedy and you know when you're busy a keynotes approach is great because you save a lot of time and this saves you even more time and you know gives you a lot of confidence in your prescription because um you know george gives it a confidence rating for you so it's nice nice to have george on hand to help you out okay great <laughs> That makes sense. Yeah. Um, is there, um, someone's asking, is there a list of the default repertories that are included in, in VES? In VES. VES, VES will work with any repertory you have in your, in your package, essentially. Perfect. But if you, you know, if you have something like the QREP by Sher, you'd have to change the view in VES to full repertory for it to, um, for it to work okay. because his view filters out Jeremy Sher as an author essentially. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, it will, it will work with any of your, any of your repertories at all. And then can you compare the difference between Vess and the Vithulkis compass? Um, not really because I haven't used, um, compass. So <laughs> essentially the, um, the difference is, in uh, our version of it, you can use all of these repertories with it. And in the compass, you can use the, you know, photographer's repertory. So I'd say there's probably a wider scope for, um, you know, for finding different, um, different remedies, different approaches. You know, you can change the view in our um, expert system, which, um, you know, wouldn't be an option in compass. Um, and, you know, apart from that, they probably made some changes to it, um, but I can't comment. But, you know, you can try it out as well. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. She, Tamara is saying that it sounds like he has his own repertory <clears throat> yeah. in the Compass. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Okie dokie. <clears throat> so, I have a few more examples of how to use it. <clears throat> so this is going over what we looked at already. We showed the keynotes icon, how to ask confirmatory questions. This is just a guide on how to change some of the settings inside the VES. Yeah. So this is an example which highlights the prominence afforded to mind symptoms as a leading remedy does not feature in either of the physical symptoms. Okay. So, you know, we entered in this repertorization, mind grief, emotion suppress, ailments from domination and being abused. And then these two physical rubrics. So, you know, depending on your approach to homeopathy, you know, I would probably want to choose a remedy that covered those um physicals if it was you know unless you know staff saga was definitely their constitution remedy and it was like yeah you know i'm going to give it and see how it goes so that is just a little example to show you know be careful with your mind symptoms in that example you know you got four mind symptoms and two physicals so it's given it a lot of weight to to the mind symptoms okay but you can see it also says ask about coffee so these are your two to really go for it in terms of differentiating. So we kind of covered this a little bit. This is how to use the take screen. I don't know how many of you use this. Um, you can access it with the hotkey F6, but um, I'll just show you in the program. Essentially in all computers by default, your F keys are set up to, you know, adjust um, brightness um, or, um, you know, volume, stuff like that. So 
normally if you've got it set up like that you have to press the function key first before pressing an f key um let's just show you so if i wanted to add this rubric i can press f6 and then i get this um take window then i can mark it as causative change the intensity take the cross references with it so it gives you loads of options you can select which clipboard to put it into it's it's a pretty useful thing to to get to get to grips with and and luke can you can you go over what the cross reference is for people yeah yeah so the cross references um if i just if i click this icon here my remedies will disappear it makes it easier to see the cross references they're listed underneath the rubric so i'm just going to go ahead and um, click on a clipboard to make it active so you do that by holding the alt key and clicking on a different keyboard a different clipboard so here we've got mind full of cares so these are the cross references and they're sort of hints for other rubrics and it's particularly useful in the mind section so one thing I can do is press F6 or function key F6, depending on your computer, and then take the cross references with that rubric. So if I press take now, all of those rubrics go into my second clipboard all in one go. Then what I'm going to do is look at them and say, right, cares full of <coughs> ailments from cares, definitely. So we we'll keep that. We're going to take out anxiety for sure. Grief, serious, expression haggard, sleepiness from cares, maybe. So you can go through and maybe like get rid of all of those. And then you've got four rubrics that together create uh, one rubric of 236 remedies. So it gives you a wider scope, um, which is useful when you're using mind symptoms because, you know, like we said, it's a bit of a minefield. They're open to interpretation so the final thing you've got to do here is now group them or combine them so you press command a or control a for pc and then um, you right click and you combine and you add them to a group by assigning a letter or you can um, make your own combined rubric now that is something that you can't reverse so unless you're totally sure i would stick with this option here and then group so then if you wanted to combine this clipboard and that clipboard you hold down the command key on a mac click on the other one and then you've got them both uh, running so let's just take that one out because that's doubling up and then what we could do is now open the vest again and see if that alters the results but it's still leading towards burrito car okay so let's just go back here so when to use large rubrics in the vest so <clears throat> let's say you want to mark um, a particular organ as being um, you know problem or you know that's where they have the seat of their pathology so in this following example i've taken um the rubric abdomen liver and region of liver complaints of so it's just very generic rubric so it's quite big but it has all of those you know this sort of chelidoniums your lycopodiums so all these remedies that are known to work for um, have a special affinity for it so if you add an intensity you know if you underline that rubric um, then you'll get those remedies coming through much more clearly so here you can see those are the rubrics I entered. It's marked up with an intensity of four. Oops. Oh dear. Oh dear. It's all gone wrong. There we go. <clears throat> and there's a bunch of other rubrics in there. So it's just a little example. <clears throat> And then this is the same repertorization, but using the VES, <clears throat> and it brings out Aura Metallica, but it also brings out Nature himself, all of these ones here, Chalidonium, Magmure, and you can see here, smaller remedies that do not come through in a flat repertorization are brought to your attention. So Iodatum, Iodine, 
is ranked 69 in the normal repertorization, Chelidanium 38, Cornus 108, Oromidatum 89. So those are all remedies that are much more visible using the less. Okay, so they've got a more um, specific focus on the liver. So that's an example of when to use a large rubric. And then Luke, um, with the confidence interval, you know how it will change. Yeah. Can you explain that a little bit, what those mean, the numbers? I don't really know what they mean. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. like super confident or, I, um, okay. yeah, I don't, I don't pay much attention to that. Okay, okay. Sounds <laughs> yeah. So in the next example, um, this is more to do with <clears throat> how, how big an impact small rubrics have using this system. So... The rubric, um, so this is the one that I'm highlighting, delusions, these diabolical faces, you know, it's one of those things that you look at in the repertoire and you think, who's ever going to say that to me? But, you know, it might happen. Um, <clears throat> so it's only got four remedies in it, so it's a tiny rubric. It's very characteristic. It's got an intensity of two in the analysis, <clears throat> and it's going to have a strong bearing on the vest. So you can see... Here is a repertorization with lots of large rubrics, <clears throat> forsaken feeling, timidity, etc. And up here, just one small rubric. And you can see that, you know, Carbine Amalis has it, Corsicum has it. But when you click on the VES, Ambrogrisia is the one that has it in italics. So it is the one that has a very strong. Um, connection has a you know the exact symptom essentially and that one shoots right up to the top of your repertorization so it can really uncover um, something that would be otherwise a bit hidden and a bit hard to find so um yeah let me run through a couple more so this is just to show you how hierarchy works in VES. So I've mentioned this already. Um, so this is to show how um, strong the mind symptoms are again. So again, we've just got an example of a repertorization. This is, you know, a modern remedy proving that, you know, it's probably not going to come through using a standard uh, Vitalkus view. So that's one clipboard. And then down here, we've got a, a particular, so a stomach, then we've got a general, then we've got a mind. So it's using that hierarchy that we talked about earlier. So <clears throat> Azarum is the first remedy because it's in this very small mind rubric, ailments from excessive ambition. So that comes through first. And then uh, capsicum because it's in the very small general with, you know, bold type, really, you know, Again, it's a very peculiar characteristic symptom. And then you have Veratrum comes through because it has the bold type single uh, remedy rubric, but it's only a particular. So that really highlights to you what's going on under the hood of, of the vest. You know, I hope, hope that makes sense. And this example is about, you know, how you can load it up with a lot of rubrics, you know, if you're in a hurry or, you know, if you're, you know, just experimenting with it. So this analysis has got 60 rubrics in it. Um, looking at it conventionally, you know, it's all the polycrests. Looking at it with the VES, it brings, you know, I've changed the view to um, the full repertory. It brings out um, Jeremy Scher's Salmon remedy and you can see it's covered in loads of those um, symptoms so this is how you know you can enter in uh, way more rubrics than normal and you know then when you look at it in the vest you're like oh it actually covers you know a lot of that state even though it's nowhere to be seen in a normal repertorization and in your experience so you, yeah oh sorry luke in your experience what what number of rubrics do you find is like the sweet spot for yourself yeah. when using this program or does it change? Yeah. If you're using lots of, um, 
small rubrics, you can kind of go for it. Um, but if you're using large rubrics, it's, it's better not to put in uh, more than eight, I would say. Um, I think that, you know, probably go for, bet you know, between like eight and 25 or something would be a rough guide, I would say. Yeah. Yeah, I think I was just going to say that, um, you know, by changing the repertory view in the VES, um, especially if you've got a lot of dreams um, that you want to see, that you want to repertorize, um, that's a good thing to do because a lot of our modern provings are much richer in um, in dreams than, than the older ones. Case examples, yeah, we'll come to that one. So, so really okay. fast, um, yeah, we have no, another go for it. question. Um, we're a question, does the VES show contraindications like the Frey polar polarity analysis software? Does it show that? No, it doesn't. But there's no reason why you can't um, use both systems side by side. So I've done that before. Um, you... You know, you use the Heiner Fry um, polarity software to, or the, you know, the module in Radar to, um, you know, you put in your modalities and it will show you useful contraindications. So if you're then doing a VES repertorization as well, you can re you could take a screenshot of your Fry one and then refer back to it and be like, oh yeah, you know, it's not going to be Pulse Tiller because, you know. She, you know, she's not thirstless or thirsty. I can't remember which one it is now. <laughs> it's been a long day. Um, yeah, yeah. So yeah, certainly you can use both. You've got a, all those tools at your disposal. Okay, great. Um, and then um, another question: Does yeah. the vest use the same keynotes of radar? Um, it does. Okay. And does it have compasses keynotes? I don't know. No, it has Eric van Vonsel's keynotes. So he's a, he's a Dutch homeopath who spent many years working with George. So they're, they're very much in line with the Togus's way of understanding remedies. Okay, great. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, any other, any other questions? No, we're good no. for now. Cool. Yeah, thank you. Cool. No problems. Right, so I've got a few <clears throat> examples here. Okay, and what we can do actually is <clears throat> show you quickly a patient file. Okay, so this is the last consultation here, and this is the first consultation. Now, what, what you'll see uh, that I've done here is I've graded the symptoms in the patient file as well. And um, at the moment it's set so that uh, all the strongest symptoms are at the top of the patient file. So the way you do that, let me just reverse that for now. So this is how it would look um, if you type the case um, as, as you're going, as you're receiving the case. And um, you can, as you're going, you know, you can mark up um, a symptom that you think is um, particularly important. Uh, you don't have to be too fussy about whether it's a two, three, or a four. It just helps it pop out later on. So, you know, if I wanted to make this um, more important, it's just when your mouse is in, you know, this bit of text, you just come up here and click on the corresponding number. And then as you go down, you can also, in this column here, you can tag symptoms. So when your cursor is in that column and you press F9, you can then, it brings up a list of all these different tags and you can create your own using this plus button here. So for example, um, you could say it's a modality, then press enter. And then if you click on modality, it will show you all the modalities, okay? So they just pop up in their own window. So that is a nice way to go from your patient file to your 
looking for rubrics because it mm. really focuses your mind on, on what's important. So th what I had done before was to right click and then sort the symptoms by decreasing intensity. And then all your important symptoms that you've marked and you want to come back to, jump back up to the top. And you can even look at both consultations together that way as well. Yeah, so th that's a really nice feature. And um, let me just, if I show you what my process would be there, if I just get rid of that. <clears throat> So you could sort of, so this was the you know main problem that um, the child was brought to me with. And, and, you know, so I'm going to go looking for that particular rubric. So I can use key Alt-1 to go to my repertory, F2 to open my navigation window, type cough, and then sleep awakens from, so that's when it happens. Enter, so you can go to the repertory. You can see that I've disabled the remedies, and that I find useful because otherwise you can uh, have a remedy in your mind and be like, "Oh, if it's not in that rubric, then I'm not going to use that rubric." You know what I mean, so you, you bias yourself, and you know it's really dumb. So <laughs> I I just t turn them off when I'm when I'm repertorizing because otherwise, yeah, the the temptation is there to do it. So if you want to uh, take that and mark it with an intensity, you can use the shortcut, shift equals, and then add the intensity there, so bold, and then enter, and it goes into your clipboard. And then let's say we want to stay um, in the cough chapter, so I'll just start typing night, night, waking from the cough. Then I could do the same shortcut from here, so it's even quicker. Okay, let me know if, if it's making sense or you don't know what I'm doing. Cough. You can use the back key to, to move back. Cough, lying, aggravates. So once you see your main rubric at the top there, you can use the shortcut shift equals and then enter a number. And that gives it its weighting, its intensity. Cough, lying, you know. So quite often you'll find that there are rubrics that basically are saying the same thing, but they've been put in, you know, so you have to, you have to keep hunting and make sure you, you put enough rubrics in to make sure you're going to cover all your bases. That's, that's my approach. So cough set up, you know, and I could, I could go on. So there were a lot of specific cough symptoms, you know, paroxysmal cough, that was a very strong symptom. So you can give that a three. And then he had this um, mind symptom. You know, it doesn't like being looked at. So that's, that was very useful. Okay, and that's how I would go about building up my repertorization. Okay, that's how it looks so far. But if I go back to my patient file, I can go to the one I made earlier. So if you click on this little calendar icon, it brings up your analyses that are linked in with your consultation. And um, let me just open the last one I did. Ninety-three. Is that in it? No, that must be the one I just did literally now. There we go. Cool. So this first clipboard is the representation I did for the first appointment. So this is the full representation, the one I was just demoing there. So already, you know, these would be remedies you're considering. But essentially, the you know the child has a cough that wakes him up at night and ends in vomiting. So is it silica? No. You know, is it postilla? It could be, but does it have? Um, a real respiratory um, affinity, not especially. So um, if you load up the VES instead, you already see that the results that come through are instantly more helpful. So Antimonium Tartaricum comes through first. It has this strong <coughs> K2 
keynote symptom not wanting to be looked at that's shared by the antimoniums in general as the vomiting after eating and a vomiting during the cough exactly what he has lying aggravates it massively um, still has some cradle cap so you know it's looking like a good prescription and you can see already that Patasinum is there uh, Rumex, Drosera, Coccus cacti, Mephitis so lots of cough remedies are right there much more easy to see than when you're looking at this so hopefully you get that I mean ant tart is there you'd probably see it anyway in this case Coccus cacti is down there so you know you have to go hunting a lot more Oops, didn't mean to do that <clears throat> if you're not using the vest and the the downside to that is is speed you know if you're in a hurry um the vest will be particularly helpful yeah i i find that when i repertorize the polycrest come up all the time like the first it's the same 10 that come yeah. up but with the vest it really just allows you to look deeper which is nice yeah yeah yeah, yeah really agree and it, it, it has a way of focusing the repertorization on um what is important because you've marked it as important with your grading so that's that's why getting the grading so key so maybe we should go over that a bit more so here you know i marked up you know cannot bear to be looked at really high um in this repertorization and also the paroxysmal cough it's like what needs to be cured in the case and then you, you mark that with a three or a four and the vest will um will really help you out yeah okay and it's you know if you've got a big rubric <coughs> like cough paroxysmal um if i can show you the rubric <coughs> you can see it's got loads of bold type in it so it's so you can be quite safe adding that as a bold type symptom and not skewing your repertorization too much if you see what i mean if it was a smaller rubric and there was one bold type in it you know it'd be like use this remedy and that might not be ideal okay and then <clears throat> so uh, in this case antimonium tart worked well he'd had the cough for two months and after the remedy he um you know basically it went away and he was much better he was able to go back to school um and then when we followed up uh, maybe a month later <clears throat> the, the cough hadn't it maybe had come back once and it'd been repeated and then we took the case again and got maybe a more constitutional picture <clears throat> and you know this this more sensitive romantic side of um child became more obvious um he was also having bad dreams that were keeping him awake, like monsters, witches, being chased by animals. So, you know, you're thinking, oh, you know, maybe it's a bit of a solanacy energy in the case. But um, essentially, and here were some more physical skin symptoms. So the reptilization I made, you know, this all started... Um, when you know being left at kindergarten um so the forsaken feeling is there the dreams <clears throat> all these eruptions that he gets skin symptoms cracks and this you know i think that actually i found this um symptom by direct questioning using the vest so i was differentiating between remedies and i said oh like what's he like with baby she's like oh, i hate having his hair washed right so if we look at this repertorization in the vest, all right. <clears throat> so the shortcut, by the way, is Shift F9 to open the vest. Or you can use the little chest piece here, chest piece there. Or you can go up the top, analysis, vest. So it's always more than one way to go about your business. So interestingly, antimonium crudum was then brought out using the vest. So it um, has that bathing ag aggravates, um, frightful dreams, dreams of witches. So I was like, um, great, that makes a lot of sense. The, the sulfur side, he's very sort of curious, asks a lot of questions. Um, he's also very creative. So 
I don't know if you're using Scholten's periodic table, but antimonium's in the silver period, so the creativity row. So it was all ticking boxes. And with that remedy, you know, it lasted longer. Um, some of the skin symptoms disappeared. He, you know, was back at school more, less days off, etc. So that was a case where, you know, where it really helped, helped me. So um, if there's any questions, happy give uh, my voice a rest. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to ask. Um, when you, so how do you go about, do you look at, because the small remedies aren't going to have as many, you know. Rubrics. Rubrics, yeah. Yeah. Um, how do you differentiate between like looking at large and medium and small? There's a lot there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, it's true. Um, I would say that, you know, for me, if you get these small remedies coming up, um, and it's like a plant, uh, I would go look at it in Mikhail y Yakir's book and mm -hmm. I'd see if it fits my case based on what she's talk talking about because, um, I, you know, I think that she's done a great work with that and, um, you know, those remedies aren't going to have as many rubrics but it doesn't mean that, they, that they're not good, that they're not useful remedies, mm -hmm. you know, like this one, Scrofularia nodosa, you know, there's, she's probably got loads of information on it so for me having those come up is really helpful because I might look at these and say ah he's not any of those so then I start looking well we were saying Solanaceae dreams of witches could he be you know a rotten potato <laughs> no one really wants to be that but you know and there's a spider here as well so are there themes of the spider group is there restlessness mischief is there does he not like eating solid food prefers liquid food um you know those kind of things so um i that's how i would be using these i'd be combining them with my knowledge of remedy families and say oh yeah i could fit there mm -hmm. um also you know if antimium crudum did nothing then you'd be looking at some of these other remedies instead yeah okay. so that's yeah that would be my, my suggestion okay that makes sense um, I'm just telling people the name of Yakir's book here. I'm telling you, yeah. yeah, the Wondrous the Order. Order. Yeah, the Wondrous Order. Yeah, yeah, that's very good. And obviously, if it's a mineral and you don't know much about it, then Jan Scholten's book on the elements um, can be a really help, really helpful indeed. And you, know, you can have that inside your your Opus library, so it's easier to check. So. You know, maybe we'll maybe we'll look through so another thing you can do actually um so if we went for a plant this one <clears throat> i double click open the keynotes so there's not keynotes but it takes you to alan's uh, encyclopedia so it goes to the proving so you see it's actually you know got a number of symptoms <clears throat> even though we don't know it very well and then you can search for the remedy in all your documents see what comes through so you can see in this repertory organ remedies that it has an affinity to the pancreas and to glands so you know you'll 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 learn a load of new remedies um, if you give yourself time to explore um, this is the repertory we're working on so putting Mikhail Yakir's book into a repertory so it'll allow you to access some of that information you could look in Murphy's Materia Medica, Materia Medica guide and, you know, you get that naturopathic angle on the plant. Mm -hmm. um, we've got these new books, Vista Vintage and Source and Substance by Vermeulen. And so Source and Substance will give you, um, you know, the sort of encyclopedic detail, the kind of source information of the plant, what medicinal properties it has, you know, the cultural um you know what it's been used for perhaps and then vista vintage is um taken from um journals from america during kent's time and their, their cases toxicology reports um you know people experimenting um so you know there's there's more and more information becoming available on the smaller remedies and 
from the keynotes page as well, you can check what family it's in. So it's in the Scrofulariaceae. So again, you've got Michalia Kier's work, you've got Sankaran's work on the plants, you've got Jan Scholten's work on the plants. So if you click on uh, Google, you can go searching for information there as well. Mm -hmm. So you can look on this website, Cure, K uh, Q J U R E. That's Jan Scholten's website. <clears throat> and there you will find uh, some of his work. So you get an essence for the remedy. And that might, you, you know, might really fit your patient. You never know. Mm -hmm. You can check his family info on it. You can see what order of plants it comes from. So you could also, you know, you use the back key to return here and you could check out into homeopathy. Has anyone got a case that I can read? Yeah. So that's how I'd go about checking out the um, smaller remedies. And, Great. Um, that's yeah. really helpful. Yeah. Cool. Um, we have a few questions. Um, Great. So someone is asking what are values of the oh what are values of the confidence indicator in vets you consider oh. low versus strong right right so okay well i guess um i guess you saw with this case i didn't even have a confidence rating but the remedy i chose was at the top so i think what you'll find when you're working with um real people real cases you might not necessarily get a confidence rating from the vest, but as far as I'm concerned, it really doesn't really doesn't matter at all. Um, you know, you're it's whenever you're repertorizing, it's a gateway into studying Materia Medica and finding, you know, really checking that you know does it match on the mental level, does it match the affinities, does it match the pathology, etc. So um, I know it doesn't answer your question. Sorry. Um, I would say like if it's, you know, real clear cut choice, then you'll get a high confidence rating. If it's less clear cut, um, it'll be lower. And then maybe you, you should be asking more questions of the, you know, the top five candidates. So he, where he says, ask questions about these, you know, maybe take that a bit more seriously if you get a low confidence rating from it. Okay, and then they're ask, They're also asking, what is the significance of the second indicator to go along with this? Okay, um, how do you mean? Second indicator. Yeah, I don't know. Do you want to clarify what that what that means? Um, yeah, that'd be cool if possible. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. I'll get them to, to clarify what, what question that is. Um, another question, if you are approaching the case at a constitutional level, yeah. um, is VEST as likely to be helpful for that? I would say yes. Yeah. I, I'd say, um, yeah, yeah. I'll give, um, hopefully I've got an example to show. But um, as long as you're getting um, clear symptoms, it's helpful. If the patient's, you know, very vague and the vital force is a bit suppressed and they're very, um, you know, in their heads and, you know, it's more about the language they use and their dreams and that kind of case, then, um, you know, I'd say it's not the, the best tool that we have available. But for anything else, if it's a symptom, um, you know, yeah, use it. And um, I think that it, the good thing about it is it encourages you to dig deeper for your symptoms. It's like, okay, that's great. Thank you for telling me that. But, you know, what about this? Um, tell me more, you know, and it gets you to, 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 to really try and qualify that symptom to make it more useful for you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And then um, somebody is asking what version of radar you're using. I'm guessing it's the full version. Yeah, yeah, it's the it's the full. So it's a perk of being working for the company. <laughs> so you get to use the full version. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, yeah, and and then to clarify. Oh, okay. Yeah, the person that asked the previous question, she she, you answered her question with the confidence interval. So she's. Good. Oh, cool. Okay, great. Okay. Yeah, excellent. So, um, 
yeah, this is a good example to show you. Maybe I'll show you the um, patient file again. So I had a quick question just for myself, Luke. Yeah. Um, if you ask, if you go back to the clipboard, if you want to change the intensity, how? Yeah. What's an easy way you can do that? Yeah, well, that's a good question. If you accidentally make it a four, but you wanted it to be a one. Yeah, so here we've got uh, Mind Defiant set to uh, four. You just mm -hmm. click on the rubric and then press the number you want it to be. Oh, okay, great. Okay, just nice highlight and, and then press the number. Okay, great. Yeah, 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 it's easier than you think. You can right click and change intensity here, but you know, slower. And you only want to go from one to four when you're using VES. You don't want to go higher than four. Correct. No, I don't think there's any point because it's matching the um, it's matching the grading in the repertory. So okay. since it's only goes up to four, so okay. yeah, it won't change results. I don't think massively. If you put the nine there, it would probably just use it as a four. I think, as far as I can tell. Okay, great. If you want to sort of make something more, give it more impact to the vest, you can mark it as a causative rubric, which you have to do in it as you're going so um if it was like intolerant of contradiction anytime they're contradicted that's when their symptoms come on i could so if i delete this one now right click and then i go to that in my repertory contradiction here <clears throat> so the easiest way is to use your f6 take menu and then mark it as causative. You see the little hashtag comes up. So that's another way you can do it. If you use the shift equals, you just then have to put in a hashtag and that will mark it as causative. And then you can give it a grading. Okay. Okay. So yeah. Any other questions? Not right now. Cool. So I guess there's maybe one more case I can show. Um, it's another child, and it's more like a behavioral problems. And, you know, I've done the same thing here. I've brought all the um, symptoms that I've marked up in my patient file to the top by right-clicking, sort symptoms by decreasing intensity. You've got your two consultations there, where you can just look at one. And... You know, some of the striking things that came out was this, you know, fighting, manic, energy, just so much energy, um, you know, constantly buzzing around the room and asking questions and very precocious and, you know, behaving well with adults one minute and then sort of lying or, you know, if they're being talked about or laughed at, it's, you know, they get really pissed um, with that. Um, you know, bossiness, cutting things into pieces, very sensitive to moods, you know, really pick up on any sort of um, grouch or, you know, change to like someone getting a bit, um, you know, like as if she's being reprimanded. Um, favorite colors, blue and black. So, you know, again, uh, good, good symptoms to work with. <clears throat> and um, these were some that I used. So they, they were moving around a lot as a family, so I used this rubric. Um, I think that this was more to do with um, the kind of backstory, to do with the mother and her, um, when she was conceived and you know, splitting up of the parents, so I used this rubric. Um, yeah, mania, mood changeable, tolerant of contradiction, defiant. Okay, and then these rubrics as well attention seeking so you can see there's smaller rubrics in this clipboard desire for black admonition ag etc and then in this third clipboard i've got <clears throat> for that some generalities food cravings and other bits so i can bring all those together holding the command key clicking on the clipboards then open the vest. Okay. 
and it does it takes a little while longer if you've got um, a large number of mics. And in this case, it's just saying, you know, look at Ignatia, look at Tarantula. So the energy of the patient and her behavior was just totally Tarantula, basically. You know, she was even going up behind her mom and sort of jumping on her. So, and you know, you see these highly characteristic rubrics in Tarantula, anger when touched, desire salt, tearing things, Delusion insulted, admonition ag. I think there is even um, company. There is colours, black desire for as well somewhere, but I'm not seeing it now. So there we go. I mean, I think I've I've done what I done what I set out to do. If there's yeah, any other questions, definitely. Yeah. Do you guys have any questions? This is this is very helpful for me. I've never seen this system before so I'm gonna start using it um, Very good. so okay so yeah somebody is saying that they realize um, that they hesitated a lot in emphasizing symptoms right in the best system but but it seems like that's very important because then that helps the vest system tell you what remedies you know what needs to be cured in the case yeah yeah it's a learning curve for sure um getting used to the grading side of things um and i'm not i'm not saying that i've got it totally spot on because i've kind of um learned learned by myself really how to get the most out of it um but i would say that you know if you follow those guidelines if i go back to my presentation um and these guidelines that are, are i'll show you where you can find them so this is what he suggests to set up. So no more than 20% should be marked to be underlined. No more than 50 bold. No more than 80 metallic. No more than 80% plain type. So those are his kind of, that's his guide to, to sort of grading. But yeah, if you think about what needs to be cured and grade that high, I mean, that's that's a good way to go about it. Yeah. Okay. Great. And you're getting a lot of thank yous. Um, by the oh, way, cool. a lot of people are saying thank you. This was so helpful. Great. Um, yeah. And then a quick question. Um, can you please show the drop down menu that gives the options for repertories? Yeah. So what the different views in the vest or um, all the different repertories we've got in the program? Um, I'm sure, but you, you just showed that one. And then the repertories. The, repertories, the you, you click on your repertory icon and it depends on your, um, system. So one, one thing I find that is quite helpful to do is if you right click on your toolbar, let's just get rid of this, right click on your toolbar, you can get rid of the clipboards. And if you do that, you know, you've got to remember to bring them back again later, but if you do that, you can drag this then you can read what's there more easily. Yeah. So these are basically all your repertories here. Great. Yeah. And, and um, Dana, you can use any repertory in this VEST system. So any of those that he's showing, you can drag into they the VEST system. Yeah. One thing you can do um, to make that easy is, like, let's say, let's just clear this one. Don't save, close my patient. Uh, let's say you're going to search for the advanced search, F5 defiant. And you want to look in all your repertories in one go. So there, it's found um, 71 hits. That's got, this is a new repertory we're working on. It's not quite ready, but Patricia Hatherley's lax repertory. We've got Murphy in there, Synthesis, Degroot's Dream Repertory. These are all available. Some of them are add-ons, some of them are in your package. Um, if you then tick this option, view all documents in one list, the shortcut that lets you add all of those and create one rubric. So on a Max, Command, Enter, PC, Control, Enter. And then you see the numbers going up on that first clipboard. 
until it gets to 71. And then you can rename it. And then you've got a rubric that incorporates all of those repertories all in one. So that's that's one way you can do it. Or, um, you know, let's say uh, you want to use Fatax repertory. Uh, size repertory. By the way, I don't know if you do this, but you can look at the um, table of contents directly here. Um, so you can kind of navigate. I quite like having them, you know, click the drop down here and you have the chapters directly in the table of contents. It's a bit easier to see what you've got open then. So let's say it was like, it was a problem with the heart. You can go to Fatax repertory and it's much smaller and it's like, um, you know, the information's just sort of um, distilled almost and his repertory is built on his, his clinical work, which is, you know, he saw a formidable number of patients and these are the remedies that he turned to and used over and over again. So it's good repertory to use. You could just use this one um, with the best or you could combine it with um, the Boja Boninghausen repertory or um, the therapeutic pocketbook, you know, up to you. Great. Yeah. Good. And everybody, this recording will be posted to our training, Radar Opus training website. Um, I've put the link in the comment box for you all. I'll post this in two to three days from now. Um, and I, I think that's it. Do you all have any Perfect. more questions? You're getting a lot of thank yous. <laughs> oh, that's really sweet. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks yeah. for having me. Yeah. I hope it was okay. <laughs> it, it was very helpful. It really was. Cool. Yeah. Good, good, good. good. Um, well, and, enjoy using it. Yeah, thank you so much. And everybody, um, look out on your emails. We're going to have a sale for the VES system. Um, so just keep a lookout on your emails so you can see the sale that's going on. Okay. Great. Perfect. Well, um, I'm gonna go and uh, have my dinner. Okay. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you so much, Luke. <laughs> it's You're probably more so coffee great. time for you, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. It was it was really great to meet you, and and we really appreciate it. You're getting a bunch of thank yous right now. Great. Great. Okay. 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 Have a good day, everyone. Thank Bye. you, everybody. See you next time. Bye. Bye.